So the Tata Indian Premier League is in full swing and you can't keep the West Indians out of the game. Although there was a tame showing from Andre Russell in Kolkata Knight Riders seven wicket loss to Chennai Super Kings earlier on Monday. Russell could only manage a runner ball 10 while fellow West Indian, the internationally retired Sunil Narayan carved out a 20 ball 27. KKR were restricted to 137 for nine from their 20 overs. CSK then got to victory at 141 for three in 17.4 overs. And the Ryan finished with one for 30 from his four overs. The most noteworthy performance had, however, uh, taken place over the weekend when the Caribbean flair in this season's tournament took center stage. Guyanese all-rounder Romario Shepard first smashed an unbeaten 10 ball 39 to lift Mumbai Indians to a 29 run win over Delhi on Sunday. Their first win of the campaign. Trinbagonian left hander Nicholas Puran then followed suit in the day's second encounter as he too fashioned an unbeaten knock, 32 from 22 balls, to help look now Super Giants to a 33 run win over Gujarat Titans. Their third win on the trot. Nikhil Timchandani joins us via Zoom to discuss the latest West Indian performances in the competition. And uh, always great to have you on the show, uh, Nikhil. And uh, I think. Um, Ricardo had said last week that he picks KKR to win the Indian Premier League this year, and they very well may do, but they had a stutter today, didn't they? Yeah, I think uh, it was interesting really to see how things unfolded. You look at the first two weeks of the IPL, it has been a lot of batting dominance, um, a lot of flat surfaces, placid surfaces that hasn't really offered much for the bowlers. But this was the typical quintessential chip-up surface that we sort of expected, where you're always going to have something in it for your spinners, and the guys who score runs are more often than not those that are probably the better players of spin. It's interesting because you listen to the pitch report, the way that the KKR started, Narain and Raghubanshi put on 56 from 36, and I thought, well, wow, this is a 200-like surface, but it changed so quickly. So it's, it's a big factoring of win the toss, win the game, because you saw how the Drew factor then came in and helped CSK's batters um, in the second inning. So, yeah, I think this is what we expected from Chepot going in. It's why Chennai have invested heavily in guys like Mahesh Tikshana. Um, they've got Mustafizer who can take pace off the ball, and, of course, Jadeja, who was very good today. But, look, this is a team built for home conditions. They've won 70% of their matches at the Chepot, and if they can continue in that trend, they're going to be definitely in the playoffs and, and be a hard team to beat come the end of the IPL. Yeah, we looked at the weekend's result and we saw where Romario Shepard um, exploded and Nicholas Puran continued his good match, match winning or match finishing form. Uh, a good look for the West Indies players heading to the T20 World Cup this summer. Yeah, well, Lance, I think we, we know that Romario Shepard's biggest thing has always been opportunity. I mean, you even look at in the CPL, he doesn't face as many deliveries. And I think it's almost worked in his favor in situations like this where... He's almost mastered the ability to come in and not have five or ten balls where he can get himself set. He has to literally go from ball one. And in a game where you win by 29 runs, he gets 32 off the last over. It is absolutely massive. I think he has nailed himself on uh, for the rest of the tournament. This guy on screen, Nicholas Puran, I think we need to have a serious discussion about him when it comes to West Indian prospect because the finishing ability of him and the regularity in which he's been able to sort of bat in the middle overs and even at the back end, but strike at 160, 170. Lance, it's made me rethink, how, are we using Nicholas Puran the right way for the West Indies? Is he better at three or is he better at five, where he can literally take apart the best bowlers in the world at the back end of the innings and capitalize? He has been, for me, the reason why Lucknow are so strong this season. Impact in every game. Yeah, and I've always been impressed with Nicholas Puran, uh, Nikhil. He's one of my favorite cricketers globally. And, and I agree with you. I think there is a lot of explosiveness in, in his cricket. And um, on his best day, he can take any, any bowling attack apart. Yeah, and I understand the discussion. Everyone will say, well, look, you want your best T20 players, the Butlers, the Virats, facing the most deliveries. But when Nicholas Puran does bat early, so let's say he bats at three for the West Indies, comes in the power play, a lot of times he's facing the swinging ball or facing that team's best bowlers where the ball is new. So at times he can actually be dismissed. Obviously, it can work in both ways.
but I'm watching him in this IPL, the way that he's taking down teams from over 12 to 20. I think it could, it could really help the West Indies. It'll be interesting to see after this IPL, if he continues in this vein, how Darren Sammy and them sort of see him best because you can have a situation where maybe you send Rutherford up the order, who's another left-handed option who can bat at four, and then you have Puran at five to sort of finish your innings because you look at Klaassen, Puran, Russell, these guys are, are winning games for their teams because of the finishing ability in this IPL. Yeah, and just going back to Romario Shepard for a moment, you mentioned about him getting opportunities. This is only his second game for Mumbai since the IPL started, and he grabbed the opportunity with both hands. Massively, and many forget that Shepard went a whole season at Sunrisers, didn't play a game. Latno Super Giants last season, he didn't play, so uh, it's been a long time coming for him. What I think he adds for them is, so I know he went for 54 runs in the last game, but it was a batting paradise, I think, a death bowling option, so it takes some of the load off of Jasper Fumra, um, and definitely this power hitting. It allows Hardik Pandya, who we saw bad at four for the first time this season, where I think he's best suited, because now you have another finisher, almost like a Pollard-esque from a couple years ago. You've got Tim David and Shepard, who obviously put on that mammoth partnership, and it's not often that you see Tim David as a spectator at the other end. It just tells you the magnitude of this guy's hitting ability. Massive, massive, I think, deal for West Indian prospects going into the T20 World Cup. Yeah, and a quick comment on Rajasthan Royals. 4-0 so far in the tournament, Nikhil. Uh, Shimron Hetmar has been playing. Rodman Powell, no games yet. Yeah, best bowling lineup in, in the tournament for me. Uh, it's crazy that Hetmar hasn't really done anything with the bat, and it's because he hasn't had the opportunity to. It's a top order that has fired um, supremely well. Joss Butler got 100 a couple of days ago. Rian Parag is in the top run scores. Samson, their captain, has started well, as always. But that bowling lineup, those two spinners, Shahal and Ashwin, both and Nandre Berger, credit to their scouting team for bringing in the left arm seamer from South Africa. I just can't see an area where they're weak in terms of the bowling side of things. They're suited from all conditions in the IPL. And if you win a couple more games, you're pretty much nailed into the playoffs. Obviously, it's a different game when you get into those playoffs. But that bowling lineup, you know the saying, Lance, they say batting wins you games, the bowling wins you tournaments. They're well on track to win this competition. Yeah, and is there any worry at all, Nikhil, about uh, Rovman Powell um, not playing up to this point? He hasn't played any competitive cricket since the PSL, I think. Uh, that would be, well, mid-March would have been the last mm. time he, he, he played. But as the team tries to, well, West Indies players try to fine-tune their skills for the T20 World Cup. Any concern that um, Rovman isn't seeing any action just yet and he's the West Indies captain? Yeah, from a West Indian perspective, of course we would love to see him play. Unfortunately, Rajasthan, they have their best interests of their team at heart. So uh, no surprises for me that they've backed Hetmeyer just because of how well he's done in the last couple of years. Three seasons, he's struck at over 150 uh, in that number five and six position for them. So I'm not surprised that they've stuck with him. I think luckily for West Indian fans that the fact that Robin Powell is not in the team, it's good that it's Hetmeyer uh, who's playing in front of him because another West Indian who is trying to sort of uh, show the captain, show the selectors and head coach that he can make a difference in the T20 World Cup team. I don't expect that top order to fire like this throughout the tournament. It's a long season. And I think Hetmeyer, who, in, in my opinion, I've seen a couple of videos of him on social media. He looks a lot leaner. He looks a lot fitter. And just seeing a couple of clips of him hitting the ball in the last couple of games, he's hitting the ball well. So... I mean, he would have asked for a better opportunity with Rovman in and working closely with him to impress. So let's see what happens. Mm. All right, Nikhil, always great talking to you here on the Sportsmax Zone. Of course, uh, you can see IPL matches on Sportsmax and our Sportsmax app. Our next live commentary game is on Tuesday morning. So uh, fans can look out for that as we continue to monitor the uh, world's greatest T20 franchise tournament. Nikhil, we'll talk to you again soon, I'm sure. All right, cheers, Lance. Have a good one. Yeah, great. And we'll be back with more on the Sportsmax Zone after this.